Greetings, weirdlings. If you've been following me on Facebook or Twitter, you know that I'm working on a couples cosplay, Punk, Rock, Roger, and Jessica Rabbit. The most defining feature of Roger Rabbit, whether it's a humanoid version or the actual cartoon version, are his ears. It was very important for me to get these right, and I want to share them with you because I feel like you can use this technique to make small regular bunny ears, to make cat ears, to make bear ears, basically any kind of ear you want to make you could probably use this technique because I feel like I'm gonna make some good ears after this. This is more or less what your ear is gonna turn out to look like, obviously without the chunk out of it, unless that's what you wanna do, and I'll show you how to do that after we do the ear. Step one to creating your ear, make a template. Because Roger Rabbit's ears are a little longer than most rabbit ears, I had to tape two pieces of cardstock together in order to get the right length. I just used regular duct tape to adhere the two pieces together, and then I drew out what I wanted my finished ear to look like. And by finished ear, I mean after it's all been sewn together and all that jazz, this is what I want it to look like. So I drew that, and I cut that out, and this is my final pattern. I added some masking tape to the sides and that allowed me to put in the seam allowance. I used about fourth of an inch for each seam allowance. So a fourth of an inch from the edge of the fabric inward. And then I used that line that I stitched to make my next seam allowance, which would be another fourth of an inch. I'll give you a better idea of what that is going to look like and how that's all gonna work out when I pull out the sewing machine, but this is what my pattern looks like. It's the cardstock with the masking tape, two seam allowances for one fourth of an inch to allow that wire to be threaded through. So from there, I traced my cardstock again onto another set of papers pasted together. And from there, I created the inner ear, which is gonna be that pink part of the ear. So this will be the white fur, this will be the pink ear, and I use this as a template to make the inner ear that way they fit together nicely. I probably should have started out with what materials you need, huh? But I guess how much material you need actually depends on how big your pattern is. So take your template to the fabric store and take a look at your fur. As you can see, this fur, I hope you can see it well on the camera, it has a grain to it. So I can pet it this way and the fur gets all fluffed up like if you were to pet a cat wrong. And then I can pet it this way and it lays down. The fur grain goes this way to my right. So I don't want to cut out my fabric to where I have my ear going this way, up and down, because then my fur is just going side to side. And that's not what real ears do. I also don't want to cut my pattern out this way to where my fur goes that way, because that's not what fur does either. So I want to do it to where the fur goes down the ear. Makes no sense. <laughs> There's a lot of fur flying around. For the inner ear, I wasn't able to use just a regular sheet of felt that I would get at any craft store because, as you can see, the inner ear is longer than the actual sheet. So I had to get my felt by the yard, and I think I only got like an eighth or a fourth of a yard or something, something super, super tiny, and it fit my inner ear perfectly. You will also need to get some wire. I am using thick jewelry wire. I think this is a 16 gauge wire. It's pretty thick. There we go. And it holds pretty well and it shapes pretty well too. So this is going to add stability into the ear. So once you cut your fur, you're gonna have a lot of extra fuzziness around the edges. Go around and groom it just a little bit. That way I don't have extra fur floating around on my machine and it doesn't make things even more confusing. All that fun stuff, there's fur everywhere. Once you have your pieces cut out and they're sort of combed and groomed, you will put them together to where the edges match. And the best way to do that is to fold in the fur, because the fur is gonna wanna go like this around the edges. Just tuck that fur back in so you can get the edges done correctly. And I am pinning the fur just in a couple of places, um, not everywhere like I would with linen or anything. And now we're ready to sew it. My edges are all together. I have pinned them here and I am going to put them in my machine. I know that the measurement from my needle right here to the edge of my foot right here, right here, is a fourth of an inch. Because of the nature of the fur fabric, you can go with a longer stitch. Um, I'm going with a 2.5 because that's what I'm comfortable at. That's what it defaulted to. 
and I don't care to change it. But you can go with a, a longer stitch if you want to. I am going to sew this using this edge of the foot as a guide to guide this edge of the fabric through. And this is going to be our first seam allowance. When I get here, I'm going to take my pin out. That way we don't have any issues. And we're still guiding this edge along to the edge of the foot. And periodically I'm stopping to make sure that I'm tucking the fur back into the fabric and making sure that these ends are meeting up on both sides. And I think I'm going to stop right there to allow the ends to turn up. I didn't allow that down here so I'll have to rip that seam out, but I'm going to end right here. Can you see my stitching? That's about a fourth of an inch. So we're going to send it back through the machine and we are going to use this stitch right here as a guide for our second uh, stitch to allow the wire to go through. So I'm lining up the stitch we just made to the edge of the foot and here's my needle so that's going to be another fourth of an inch. And it's very crucial that you pay more attention to this one than the other one because if you make this seam that we're making right here too small then your wire is not going to fit through it, it's going to be a pain in the butt, be careful. We're going to end right here. I have threaded my wire through my ears and it was pretty much a pain in the butt. Because of the length of the fur, it's not very easy to just poke it through and have it go all the way. You kind of have to help work it through. So now that I have my wire in there, I'm going to trim this excess off right here. I'm going to leave a little extra just in case I need that later. And I'm going to fold it over like that. And then I'm going to take my ear and I'm going to fold it right side out. Okay, so it's folded right side out and I am just re-bending the wire so that it takes back to the shape of the ear. Now I will take some tacky glue, put it on the back side of the felt, and paste it onto my ear and let it dry for 24 hours because that feels like a really nice gluing time. Once the inner ear is completely dry, completely dry, don't do this while it's still wet and gooey, you will fold down the edges and like I have the raw edges here, I'll just fold it down just a little bit and then I will hand stitch it close. So it'll look like this, so the inner ear goes all the way to the bottom because that's what inner ears do. If you want to make a scar effect like I did with this Roger Rabbit ear, you will make the full ear first. You will even glue on the pink and then take your scissors and cut out a chunk. Use hot glue to hold it all back together. Before you put the hot glue on, make sure you brush back the fur so that it doesn't get all up in the scarification area. So put your glue on and um, I used a dowel to help me get into the small crevices. You might need a couple of coats because um, there might be holes, it might be kind of jankety. I clipped off the weird areas with nail clippers. Some of them had like, you know, the, the hot glue strings and like the glue peaks and stuff. I clipped those down with nail clippers and then I painted over it with acrylic paint. My ears are definitely too big and too heavy to go onto a barrette. If your ears are small enough and can totally do it, I highly suggest putting it on the barrette because it kind of gives it a natural look. These though will have to go onto a headband. So I'm going to get a clear plastic headband and put these onto the headband to fit in place. So there you have how to make animal ears out of fur. Have you made animal ears? Do you have any tips or suggestions on how to make this process better? Leave it in the comments below. Give this video a big thumbs up. Share with all of your cosplay animal ear loving friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the Weird Girls YouTube channel so you don't miss what we're doing.